Hello and welcome back to the port. I'm the Gavin Major and this is a let's play in the tier 5 Japanese tech tree carrier, the Rugio. And now, the reason why I'm doing this is obviously I'm away and with the Zoiho, the first tier 5 premium carrier introduced to the game, um, I can't obviously review or play her. Um, so I thought, well, I'll give you the next best thing really and that's the Rugio. Now this is a tier 5. Five and four game of domination on fault line uh, on the M2 and Fubuki, Kirov, Ayoba, Nuremberg, Konig, Fuso, Bayern, Warspite, Ranger. Spawn on the right, which is our weak flank. So, what I might do, I might do like an initial position here and then uh, I'll adjust as things go. Now, um, because we're at tier five, I'm just gonna do a safety drop of my torpedo aircraft. Starting with torpedo aircraft because they're the most universal, uh, but also doing a safety drop because at the start of the game, a lot of ships will group up, I guess you could say, in order to protect themselves. And also, it's just the way that they spawn. Um, they're not going to be uh, scattered all over the place. They're going to be spawning in groups of twos and threes, so they're going to be uh, already clustered up as like AA protection. With the care off here, which is just not giving us the, the complete broadside that we want, so we're going to have to just make our torpedo run with this um, or potentially it looks like he's opening up now we're just going to lead about twice the width of a closed in band which is my usual lead for a cruiser for a just for a sofa battleship i line up on the bow for a destroyer i go about three times and like ahead and um against a cruiser i go um one times ahead uh, that just seems to be a nice little rule of thumb i guess you could say what I mean by how many times I go ahead is if I just drop down for a torpedo run now, once the reticle's all nicely closed in, um, that's like the width, I guess you say. So if I was going to go for the bow of a battleship, I'd like to line up. If I'm going for the bow of a broadside cruiser, then I'd like to have at least that band width ahead. Um, so almost that's why I said like double, and then for a destroyer, I go for about three. And that's if I'm going for a torpedo on the broadside of a ship. Hopefully that gives you a nice idea. Now, we've done some nice work, I think, on this flank. So what I'm hoping is maybe uh, the team that is here uh, might be able to, or inspired to, actually close in. Noting that enemy cruisers potentially can be coming around this corner. So what I want to do is maybe catch them a little bit broadside on. And there, there it is. It's an Aoba. We're going to start the torpedo run now, I think. Just slowing down the aircraft to get it nicely closed in. So that's what I do for a battleship. For a cruiser, I'm going to go for two of those. Uh, I dropped them probably a little early, but we'll, we'll see. They are very nicely clustered. It looks like well, I'm going to get two hits there. Um, with the AO we're doing those kind of maneuvers, I'm just going to recall those aircraft. I'm going to launch another flight straight away. And we'll see if we can catch out the AO, but I'm noting that the uh, the friendlies that were here are all gone, so I might have to vacate the area with my carrier rather quickly. So I'm already going to start thinking about that. So I'm going to start moving and turning, especially with the AO over there. The AO over is going to be a lot faster than me. Um, now we might see if we can catch the broadside of the AO over one more time. I was expecting her to turn in, but she's starting to turn out. She's turning away, so I'm going to wait for the arming range to be right up against the ship and maybe do a drop like that. And what I'm hoping is that obviously by the time he's moved, the torpedoes will arm and he'll be then. Yeah, he got touched there. And flooding. And uh, now we know that we did get the flooding with the previous one. It looks like he's going to beach the iron, so I'm going to quickly swing around here. I'm going to try and slow those engines down. Just try and get these ones in. I'm going to anticipate it's going to keep the turn, so I'm just going to drop about there, and maybe he might turn round into those. Now he's managed to affect his rudder quite quickly. However, with that Aoba, oh, we managed to actually catch him. Well, with that being the case, there doesn't appear to be any enemy vessels down there, so we're going to do something a bit strange. We're actually going to try and go for the cap as a uh, as a carrier. But what I'll also do, uh, the Fubuki's last spot in Bravo, four enemy battleships, check. Uh, location of the enemy carrier is not known. Um, 
So I'm going to head down this way. I'm going to do a quick scout, I guess you could say, to confirm the location of the enemy carrier. What I might do to try and stop the enemy spotting potential from these fighters is as I go by, I might call in some fighter support and hope that the fighters may be engaged, the enemy fighters. Oh no, they've flown away. And judging by the way that the torpedo aircraft are over there, that would lead me to believe that the carrier is not on this flank, so I should be alright to maybe move in and get the cap. By and there... But the conning is pretty weak. We're going to use an engine cooldown. I always forget to use those. So using the engine cooldown, we're going to see if we can push in and maybe get rid of this buy-in. Two torpedoes ought to do it. We do have five aircraft, so we'll see. Now, with the battleship, we're going to be aiming for the bow. Uh, wait till the arm distance is right about there, and then we'll see what happens. Oh, we also found the enemy Fabuki. That's quite a tempting target so we're going to quickly swing around the aircraft drop into torpedoes uh, really got to get this lead about right I think that ought to do it it all depends how much she evasively turns but it looks like we might ooh close well we're going to recall the aircraft we're going to launch the other batch and I think we're going to see if we can keep some pressure on that Fubuki. Just because the Fubuki is probably one of the most dangerous vessels on the enemy team at the moment. So we're going to race in over there. He hasn't dropped smoke, but he has dropped torpedoes. There's no one who's able to shoot at him, which is a shame. But if we can, all we need, I think, is probably just one torpedo hit. We'll be using the engine cooldown in a second just to race in over there. Probably will call in fighters as well to engage the enemy bombers. There's the Fubuki. Okay, so we're going to quickly do a swing round and then make our approach here. Thankfully, because of the engine uh, cooldown, we have been able to reduce that engine temperature. I'm anticipating them turning in, so we're going to go for that. Which I don't think is enough, unfortunately, and the enemy fighters have managed to catch us out there. However, we, we will not be relenting. We will have to keep that pressure up on the Fubuki. Until either someone on the enemy team engages the Fubuki, or we actually finally get that devastating torpedo hit that we're after. At the moment, uh, as a destroyer, his uh, previous position where he was about at a slight angle to me was always quite a, an awkward one, I guess you could say, because you're never quite sure whether he's going to go broad and turn out or whether he's going to go narrow and turn in. However, there he is. And this is actually quite a good angle to be closing in on the destroyer. want the arming range to be almost ahead of the ship and then drop the torpedoes and then hopefully he might wander into their arming range and there we go so when torpedoing the destroyer I find it's very advantageous to approach them from the stern and then that way what you can do is you can drop the torpedo, torpedo arming range at the bow of the ship and then by the time the torpedoes catch up with the enemy destroyer um, the torpedoes should be armed uh, just because you've got to take into consideration destroyer speed and stuff and you want to make sure it's nice and narrow um, the reason being is obviously then it doesn't give the destroyer a lot of wiggle room so we've been able to actually get a capture in, um, in the carrier which is uh, quite entertaining um, because the Fubuki is now gone I might be a bit more tempted maybe just to move my carrier a bit further forward so we'll just do that position there uh, we've got five aircraft. Um, should have maybe done a safety drop. They have bubbled up their AA. Uh, we will go for a drop on the Bayern. What's the other one? A war spider. Okay, yeah. We'll go for the Bayern. Loose. We'll call those aircraft and launch the next batch. 
Fubuki has been able to torpedo the war spine. I think my torpedoes probably fell a little short on the Bion because he was slowing down. However, we will endeavour to keep up the pressure on the Bion. Spotted enemy carrier. Oh, this could be entertaining. Um, obviously, what that means is I don't really want to give him the opportunity to ram, though. But we might be able to say, just dab a little bit. Now, the Ranger's going to have very good AA. Drop in those, and going back. Grabbing some more torpedo aircraft. Got a flooding, but of course, the as a carrier, he's going to have superior... Um, Wow, he's got like that ridiculous damage control party. Gonna quickly drop. We're gonna try another two torpedo hits at least. I want that should be enough of a lead. But we're gonna get one more. Uh, we let's do some HE bombers. Because their carrier is so close, I might even actually uh, keep on his tail and just keep harassing them, maybe. Oh, the, I always forget the cooldown time of their of bombers is actually quite long. Hopefully we can just get some bombs away. Safety drop. Uh, and now, really, you want to make like a curved approach onto the stern of a ship, but unfortunately, just because we're tail chasing the, uh, the Ranger, I can't really do that. Bombs away. Recall those aircraft. going to be launching a fighter now because the fighter consumed all my carriers on cooldown and I think we are going to continue tail chasing this uh, actually reading the map it looks like he's going to be trying to bring a uh, torpedo aircraft in on me so we're just going to try and turn in towards them now I'm trying to change my approach this time so I can avoid the majority of the flak should be okay. And there you go, his enemy team, well, friendly team, I should say, managed to uh, mop them up quite nicely. So, um, should be a reasonable game in the Rougio that time. I mean, it's nothing outstanding, we're not in the hundreds of thousands of damage, but managed to get 10 torpedo hits, getting 3 kills from 3 floodings, uh, three spot uh, 6 spotting ribbons, I should say, 2 bomb hits which caused a fire, we also got a capture and a defender ribbon and shot down. A total of 10 aircraft there, uh, securing first blood as well. Uh, coming top of the team, okay, I can't really complain about that. I thought it was rather mediocre, but can't really complain when you get those kind of results. Connie Wise walking away with a profit of 258,000 credits after a ship service cost of 34,000 credits. Obviously, I am using a common credit booster and a uh, premium account, which has obviously improved the uh, earning potential during this game. Uh, if you did enjoy it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. Down in the description will be the commander build and the modules used on this uh, Let's Play, along with a link to Patreon if you want to support the channel on Patreon, as it is a non monetized channel, and the email address for the uh, community spotlight videos if you want to send in any of your own game captures. Until next time, I'm the Gaff Major, and back to the ball. Hey, hey, build away! Here comes the galloping major. Bumpety, 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 bump. Get out of the way there, you fellows. Unless you want me to run you down, I guess this is the life.